John Conrad, the CEO of G Captain, a former drill ship captain, the author of Fire on the Horizon, joins us now. Hello, John. Good to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, so give us just first of all kind of the big picture on this, what what you're thinking as you're watching uh, now the longshoremen go on strike and the impact it's having on the U.S. economy. Right. Well, we, you know, we've been having all these black swan events like uh, the, you know, the Houthis attacking shipping in the Red Sea, the uh, Russians uh, mining shipping in the Black Sea, the Panama Canal drought. Um, but, you know, there have been failures in the Biden administration with all of them. We pulled out our Navy ships in the Red Sea because we couldn't defeat these Houthis. The Black Sea is now Russia's lake. Um, but while this is all going on and while the mainstream media has not been paying attention to something that is not a black swan, this port strike was well announced. It's been announced for two months. We knew that the uh, strike would be contentious. And we've also known that the Longshoremen's Union is striking against uh, the USMX, which is an organization of foreign ship owners. It's MERSC, it's MSC. But more importantly, uh, it's a representative from Costco, not Costco, the retailer, but Costco, the Chinese shipping company, has a seat on the board in the negotiations. And what we learned from the port congestion crisis is when the ships don't get into ports, the uh, foreign ship owners, which are flooding our country with uh, cheap Chinese made good, they make record profits because they can increase the freight rates on the ship because there is limited space. So you have them, they're not really interested in negotiating because a port strike is going to give them a lot of profits and it's going to benefit China, which builds all these container ships and uh, you know controls some of these shipping companies. And the longshoremen on the other side, they're not really interested in um, a negotiation either because they want massive pay increases. They are already paid a lot. And they want zero automation in the ports. And the question now, you know, if if the Biden administration comes out and, and pushes them to make a deal, or if China asks the foreign ship owners, hey, make a deal so that there's a win for Harris, then America is going to be stuck with slower ports that are not automated. We're already not behind our most efficient port is number 50 in the world. And slow cargo through ports is a tax on the American public, it's inflationary. They think this strike is going to cost $5 billion a day. That's a new aircraft carrier every three days. Let, let me talk about a couple of things uh, that leap off the page at me. One of them is, uh, again, sitting across the table from the Longshoremen's Association, uh, is the U.S. Maritime Alliance is what, they, is what this organization is called. USMX, you referred to, U.S. Maritime Alliance. And uh, you emphasize that one of the stakeholders who is sitting across the table from the union is controlled by China. It's called Costco, C-O-S-C-O. Um, that's, that, that's China being directly involved in the U.S. economy and throwing us into some chaos just weeks ahead of the election. Do I have that right? Absolutely. And if you go back to the last port crisis, in 1977 was the East Coast, but prior to that was the West Coast. And Reagan really made his name as governor of California in pointing out the fact that there were a lot of communist sympathizers in the Longshoremen Union. And, they, and he brought that all the way up to the presidency, that, that anti-communist thing that started there. And the unions got rid of a lot of the communists. There's still questions about mafia ties and other things. But now we have an actual communist control company on the other side of the negotiation, and the mainstream media is giving a complete pass. And not only is that company CCP controlled, but the other companies, the MERS, the MSCs, um, their number one client, their number one customer is China, and all of their ships are built by China. And how the shipping industry works is there are a lot of backdoor deals and smoke-filled rooms. We don't know what China is saying to these other people, the MERS, the MSCs, but it could very well be that they say in the, in the back rooms, it will never get in the press, hey, make this deal or delay the strike, and I know it's going to cost you more, but we'll give you a discount on the next ship you build. So, so John Conrad, you're looking at this right now and saying that this is – you have uh, American union workers now squaring off 
against uh, 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 immense Chinese interests. That's one of the big and un- untold stories of this entire moment. Yes, and, and I want to be clear, this is speculation we don't know, but if you look at behind it, I mean, the Black Sea is the first major issue. Ukraine's the breadbasket of the world. Well, China helped Russia bring things in there, yes. uh, you know, weapons manufacturing equipment. Then the Red so. Sea, you know, the media blames it on the Houthis. Houthis get their funding from Iran, but who does Iran get their funding from? Well, they're exporting oil to China. That's where the money's right. coming from. So behind all of these shipping things, you look at the, the drought in the Panama Canal, which is coming out now, but China's been building, buying land around the canal. So... You know, we don't have hard evidence what China's intent is here, but we know, you know, one or two layers back behind all of these problems. Yes, um, and, and it's characteristic of the way that China wields its influence, for sure, that that would be typical. Um, so uh, in, in, in this case, so, so talking about China and the way that they actually handle their ports and their shipping, you mentioned that, uh, that here in the United States, um, this, this Longshoremen Association, the union, is, is saying one of its stipulations that there be no automation whatsoever, no automation on the East Coast ports, that, that everything needs to be uh, manually handled by human beings, union members. How do they handle shipments in China? What does a Chinese port look like compared to ours? China is com- completely automated, so it's a guy running you know, computer screens and they're monitoring, but there are robotic cranes that are lifted off the ship. There are some workers on the ship that attach the crane, and then it goes to an automated movable truck and and the whole system is automated you know you have a lot of people saying we need elon must come in and create robots for the ports no everyone else has that not just china but the netherlands rotterdam um we're behind on that but more importantly china has this theory of all of the maritime things have to fit together so the foreign ministry they, they're buying ports around the world they're buying up shipyards and building ships which are you know the shipyards are building commercial and then maybe warships they're, they're getting influence. They have Logink, which is the, um, the digital software that runs behind tracking all these containers. So because their transportation minister is extremely powerful, he's connecting all of these dots around the world, where our transportation minister, Secretary Pete Buttigieg, is, he doesn't even mention this. We knew this was coming. He's on late night every day. And he said nothing about it. He's busy violating the Hatch Act, uh, yelling at Trump, and he has not warned the retailers, the American public. And then you had Commerce Secretary, uh, the regulations against the foreign ship owners comes out of Federal Maritime Commission in Department of Commerce. And Gina Raimondo, just yesterday on yes. CNBC, admitted they're doing nothing. They're, they're doing nothing. I want people they're to hear this. This is Gina Raimondo. Concentrated on Trump. This is Gina Raimondo, who you just referred to on CNBC this week. Where, where have you been kind of focused and hearing on what would happen if the strike goes, let's say, longer than a week? Uh... Again, I I have not been very focused on that. I have not been very focused on that. That's the same Commerce Secretary who didn't realize uh, that jobs reports had been revised downward by nearly a million recently. Uh, she was caught by surprise once again on television by that that essential point, again, delivered to us from the Biden administration. And and so as I'm looking at this, John Conrad, the Commerce Secretary should be aware of an industry like the, like this one, 45,000 workers, 36 ports, 40, 40% of all containerized goods in the United States. J.P. Morgan saying there's an impact somewhere between 3.8 to $4.5 billion per day. And the longshoremen outright saying that their plan in order to get paid is to, quote, cripple the U.S. economy. How does the Commerce Secretary not know anything about it? That's an excellent question, and one of the reasons is this Federal Maritime Commission is understaffed, but it's a pull agency. Someone has to ask them to look into this. They have to be asked to look in the ports to collusion, and no one is asking them. Well, one of the, the person who should be asking them is uh, DOT Secretary Pete. Um, there are over 40,000 employees in the FAA, which is the sister agency of NARAD, the U.S. Maritime Administration. He's let that number dwindle in the maritime down to 800, and half of them work at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. So he really only has three, 400 people working on policy. He's letting a lot of them work from home. And we, he hasn't published a shipyard study and since it's mandated by Congress every year. It hasn't been published in 20 years, and he hasn't done a manpower study in his entire term. He was given $1.2 trillion to fix all of its infrastructure. He's put 
less than 1% into ports. So without him asking, he's got to ask the Coast Guard to help. He's got to ask. That's the coordinating agency. He has to ask the FMC to investigate this. He has to ask the White House uh, to announce. Um, and he's just he's he's too busy on late night and focused on Trump and and doing primary debates with Tim Waltz. He is is completely uh, not. I mean, I just you can't find anything. You get on his tweets, even with the Red Sea. He's in charge of the so, the Merchant Marine. Um, they're getting attacked, and he just he hasn't said thank you once to the Merchant Mariners. They are delivering military supplies. So, so we have a we have a lot of things going on simultaneously. One, of course, is uh, Hurricane Helene just has uh, caused so much damage to the United States and the south uh, southeast United States this past week. Uh, and one of the elements of that such story that's awful is that FEMA, responsible for responding to these disasters, on their website they say num- their number one priority is is not emergency preparedness. They say it's equity. Equity is their number one priority at FEMA. And I just, John Conrad, I just checked Pete Buttigieg's website, transportation.gov, and they have a whole webpage called Priorities. Their number one priority, equity. Their number two priority, climate and sustainability. John, these are not people who are focused on keeping the ships coming in. I wish they were, because I'm a Republican, but I'm a member of the Organization of Black Maritime Graduates. Even though I'm white, I support this. But the fact is, they are failing on there, too. Out of all the services, Coast Guard, Navy, Merchant Marine, the whitest and most male is the, the U.S. Merchant Marine under Pete Buttigieg. There are women getting raped. Midshipman X head coach got raped at his college, U.S. Merchant Marine Academy, and other women have come out, and he hasn't made one arrest. There hasn't been one arrest against the rapists. And talk about the climate. So you have hundreds of billions of cubic meters of CO2 being emitted as the ships go around the Red Sea and around Africa. It's a huge emission of CO2, and they're not doing anything about it. And then you have Greta Thunberg, who was yelling at ships two years ago. Now she's, she's in support of the Houthis and Yemen. So you have to wonder, even these things that are on their website, if he really cared about DEI, he would, he would arrest rapists, and he would promote black men yeah. up to the officer yeah. ranks. So, yeah. And he would stop the Houthis, so these hundreds of billions of cubic meters of CO2 is emitted for the ship revenues. So, they're, so in other words, like, there's two things going on. Their priorities are both jacked up, and they don't even believe in the priorities they've laid out. So, yeah, that's, a, that's a, an interesting point here. You mentioned uh, a moment ago, I, I think, towards the top, uh, that there, there is some mystery about when this, of course, uh, when this strike will end and these ports can get back open. Uh, do you suspect any partisan shenanigans afoot? In other words, is there a scenario where uh, Joe Biden says, oh, Kamala Harris is now leading negotiations and uh, all of a sudden the ports are reopened and she's heralded as the hero? Yes, there, there always are. And you have to think back to the last uh, West Coast port strike. Um, you know, it went fairly smoothly. We, we thought it would be worse. But, you know, I'm very critical of all of the existing staff in the White House. But Marty Walsh, Labor Secretary, I have to admit, did an excellent job getting the parties together. But he left, and uh, so his replacement at Department of Labor, she's a Gavin Newsom uh, acolyte like Kamala Harris is. Uh, I haven't heard any good things about her negotiating skill. And Marty Walsh, again, with people to check, is busy um, with Kamala Harris doing the debate prep. So the one person who is really confident about this is now with Harris. Now that question, he is good at this. He knows the side. Is he going to, you know, whisper in her ear? I don't know. I, I think this always happens in politics. It, it can almost guarantee to happen. But getting back to the original point, I'm more worried about Trump being hard on China, which we need. We need these tariffs. And China being saying, hey, these tariffs hurt us. So let's get our ship owners, our Costco, our board members to agree to these ridiculous uh, uh, demands from the union, no automation, which are going to slow down U.S. ports to give Harris a win. I mean, that's 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 the big worry. And again, this is speculation, yes. but you have to look who has influence. And China has influence here. Marty Walsh inside the Kamala campaign has influence. Uh, yes, I would expect uh, that there are political levers being pulled i just don't know specifically what yeah no that's such an excellent point yeah that this is a chance for china to meddle in the election uh to give kamala an assist uh thank you very much john conrad ceo of g captain sir always really appreciate your insight on this very important issue thank you